Hello, and welcome to the Vision Systems Design Tech Summit Quick Chat with AT Automation Technology. My name is Dennis Semeca, Associate Editor at Vision Systems Design. Today, I'll be speaking with Guido Deutz, Director of Business Development at AT. A full bio for Guido can be found by clicking on the speaker's name below the video. Guido, thank you for joining me today. Hello, Dennis. Nice to meet you. Guido, can you tell me what is AT's smart infrared camera concept? Um, that's a good question. Many people just think uh, it, it's in an easy way. But for us, the, the smart concept really starts already with some hardware, which I brought here with us. So you see really that the uh, mechanical design of our devices already starts with a very small form factor so that people can easily integrate it and retrofit it to machines or even production environment. It has a full IP67 grade. So you will see here really also on the connector backplane, uh, not here, something like uh, R&D connectors, easy R25, really M12 connectors supported by the right set of cables with M12 connectors that helps also really to make it up for harsh and rugged environment in the production floor. Um, in addition, also from the mechanical point of view, to really protect that investment is that we have air purge on front of the lens integrated so that people can even go into, a, let's say, dust loaded environment to keep the lens and uh, clean and the operation time up. And uh, on addi in addition, we have then also a potential to even make dust covers if you put on the camera so that people can really have a reliable mechanical sensor in the field. You know? So that is from us, from our point of view, after many years experiencing in the in this integration world, yeah, we have integrated for nearly two decades, third party cameras um, into our own systems. Uh, we said, well, that is something which is really the next step from a mechanical point of view to really help the end user to have a device which you can trust because, well, whatever you don't design in, in, a, in a clever way at the beginning will rarely end into a, a good story at the end. Yeah. So on top of this, um, we said, well, in the past, we have seen by our own suppliers or by uh, market um, competitors, always the same way in going forward, having then the a camera just like a streaming camera available for any type of computer um, interface which helps them to have a third-party software going forward doing the analytics maybe doing then the ios with the process environment and yeah, where we say well yes that has some limitation and some risk for for many people in the queue because the, uh, you might end up with a very small company which has not really a worldwide presence to support your local installation, right? We have customers which design something in the US and deploy it over the world in different um, locations. Yeah, so well, then uh, all, all type of support and service issues might come up. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition, we said, well, from what we have seen in the past 15 years, the, um, the use cases, very often 80% of the applications were made with the same type of tools. Yeah, it means you have, you have an infrared image, a temperature image, where people just deploy a couple of uh, rectangular o AOIs, areas of interest, and what you want you to measure that? the average temperature. Okay. So all this was, was previously in the software on a computer is now on board on the camera available. So that that device really becomes a smart camera also from his own IP that people can easily configure for very easy tasks, their own sensor mm -hmm. and get that interconnected to their own um, PLC environment. Yeah, so that camera has not only then the ability to stream the data into the network because we can interface it with a, with a web browser, it has a web interface and you get also then the image to the user or many operators, we just want to have a, a, a thermal image to double check. Mm -hmm. But you have also the possibility to connect to really um, process control loop environment. Yeah, So that camera acts like an uh, IP biased sensor and you can connect this, for instance, whatever type of IO modules the end user might prefer in his installation. 
by uh, just uh, exchanging the uh, the uh, IP addresses. So all this can be configured on board of the camera. Not only the the way of working, yeah, or the, the configuration of the analytics, which we call job. So that this is really what brings, in our opinion, the whole let's say process camera world into that internet of things yeah, where people are not forced to go into an, an, a computer environment, but really can get something reliable in the field, which he just connects with whatever remote IO he prefers, maybe all across the planet. So how is this concept different compared to what defines a typical infrared camera in the marketplace? Yeah, you will see. Um, if um, just uh, screening around in, on, on different uh, offerings, many people still use um, a very low IP grade, which is maybe uh, IP54 or even IP, uh, IP40. So the mechanical reliability is limited. And uh, we know by experience that the stability for, for this hardware is, uh, is key to get repetitive data. And uh, that is one thing already, is one side of the metal. And the other side that the onboard functionality, you will, you will see, we see already some copycats coming up, taking a, a similar approach, but what is behind that first level or first layer of analytics is you have um, several jobs which you can run on that camera. Mm -hmm. So for instance, beside the streaming, uh, application which continues to work and streams the data wherever you allow him to go. You have then what we have an, uh, a name for a smart processing app, which is then doing all this configuration of the of the I/O stuff and the and the analytics over the different areas of interest. So you could configure it for one device, right? You can have one production line where you say, well. This is where 24 seven full year, the same object needs to be measured and controlled in temperature. That is fine. That is something what other people are also already trying to do. But we have really the core know-how developed in that way that is more like a smartphone. So we can add additional applications, not only the smart processing app, we can have more custom applications uploaded and working in parallel to that streaming. That is one thing which makes the camera really like a platform for a dedicated application where you load this up to the camera and can work on it. And in parallel, if you have maybe a production line, uh, we have seen this very often here in Europe, people have production lines which need to be much more flexible, not only one object for one, one, one goods for the whole year, but having the different charges, different batches, well, with different configurations. And then they want to just change that job, right? Mm -hmm. that, that working method on the, on, the, on the camera itself, like a recipe dedicated to that next good, which might uh, be uh, product produced for the next uh, five or six days, right? So all this can be changed on the fly on the camera not only by a user interface, well, that's maybe a learning curve, but even that can be triggered by the PLC environment. So that really at the end, the end user gets a very flexible tool, which might need and really somebody uh, trained like an integrator to get this done. But he has a very, I should, very profitable invest in terms of usability. Mm. So that is something which we, right from the beginning of the camera, started to develop the firmware for. So it is not something where we say, well, maybe it was an R&D camera, which has just one task, right? Just giving data and try to squeeze in all these functionality. No, we, we said, no, that has to be developed from scratch. Make it really like a clever smartphone. And you have these apps going on board, right? And that is our way and our vision for the future. Uh, Lua, L-U-A. It's a programming language used largely for embedded applications. Correct. Why is it important that AT smart infrared camera supports Lua scripting? Well, that is a very good question, Dennis. So in principle, um, as mentioned, 80% of the applications can already be, be served by the onboard um, tools and the way of combining those. 
But we have seen also in our experience and many field installations that sometimes you might have a, a weird combination of some data where people say, well, now I need to reprogram a complete code or what, right? That is a, a nightmare for many, many people which they want to avoid. So the industry itself, especially coming from the PLC side, um, they implemented that Lua scripting and also OPC UA is one of the keywords in, in that industry, where that data on board of the camera is then by, by a simple text script combined. So you can, whatever the software from his own uh, graphical user interface doesn't allow you directly to do, an experienced um, PLC programmer could use that Lua scripting uh, load it up in the, in the background and make that code, right? It's not something which uh, requires a highly educated C++, C Sharp or whatever type of programmer. It's really somebody who is in the field with his two mans on the process, understanding that scripting, which is, well, you need to learn it for sure, but it's, it's really understandable and basic um, so that he has the flexibility to even make these type of um, uh, weird, weird com combinations and help to make the process and the control more reliable. Guido, how do you see the infrared imaging industry growing in the near future? Well, the, the infrared imaging world is quite huge, right? We have um, not only the defense people which are developing key elements like the detectors um, for all these devices which end up into security cameras which are deployed more and more around uh, security buildings or maybe even on uh, train stations etc but you have also that in our um, let's say a segment in the industry right the general industry we have seen in the past a big push for hotspot detection and early fire a warning right so that people have one of these thermal cameras get a pre-warning if some something is just getting too hot maybe enormous or he, they know well that is maybe here a storage pit and there is something which is getting too warm and might cause a fire so that is something what we have seen in the past five years more and more rising in substation monitoring uh, critical vessel monitoring and that will also continue and also people are today more used to this type of uh, computer camera, multi-camera thing, which quite an, an, an intense architecture. Mm -hmm. But that is also where we see that our way in having more smart sensors will then also be complementary to these systems for a very, let's say, easy task in, 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 in multiple camera installations. On the other side, so that is what it is a little bit this, the security slash safety um, safety point and market segment. What we have seen is that also in the process industries, things start to moving. Yeah, for two, three decades already, you had many uh, installations in rotary kiln, yeah, um, uh, temperature control to really check that there is no breakthrough, hot spots, etc. Um, you had more and more people also using then uh, thermal imaging or thermography with temperature measurement on production goods to say, well, okay, is that temperature maybe in the right right tolerance of that process step? And that is something what we see coming up more and more. So um, the the people after now two decades being confronted also with smartphones, yeah, which have these type of thermal imaging um, devices uh, integrated or attached, they start to to understand and, and ad, uh, adopt and uh, accept that technology also for these type of temperature measurement uh, for their own production goods. So we have seen now for, yeah, I'm now for nearly 25 years in, in that segment. I have seen now new generations for them. It's no brainer to have thermal imaging used for process control. Well, when I started, uh, that was really something, uh, well, uh, a little bit exotic, I would say. You you need to really have a very expensive problem to start thinking about thermal imaging. Mm -hmm. So, in principle, that is what we see. The in the in the industry, you, you, we continue to see that hotspot stuff, safe, safety growing more and more, and then on the process floor, various applications are established already in the market, and are now ready to go to the next level with a smart camera. Thank you again, Guido, for your time today. It was my pleasure to be with you, Dennis. And uh, it's great to work with you and the Vision Systems Design team again also in future. 
Uh, just a reminder to the audience that today's session will be available here within the 2021 Vision Systems Design Tech Summit platform for the next 30 days. On behalf of Vision Systems Design and our sponsor, AT Automation Technology, we would like to thank you for joining us today.